Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And we have the founder of Living Fuel with us. His name is Casey. And Casey Krejci is going to talk to us today about everything health. And I'm telling you right now, this guy really knows how to take your health to the next level. His products are amazing. I've used them myself. And we're going to be talking about all things today. So get ready and get excited. So Casey, welcome. It's so nice to be here. God I'm, bless you. Yes, I'm so excited. What's the beautiful so weather have, out, you out your window? What? Where are you? You have beautiful weather out your window there. Oh, yeah. I'm in Virginia Beach. I'm oh, in wow, Virginia nice Beach, day. Virginia. It's nice out today. Orlando, Florida. Yes. So tell tell us, I want you to hold up your book. And if you're listening to this episode, I'd love for you to watch it as well. He's written a best-selling book called Super Health Diet, The Last Diet You Will Ever Need. So give us what, what inspired you to write that book and give us like the top three things you talk about in that book. Boy, top three. I'm gonna have to. I may have to go beyond your three. Yeah, but, go uh, ahead. Started. Okay, so years ago, uh, I met this woman of my dreams, and she happened to be Miss Florida, and she was Miss Florida USA, and she competed both Miss America, Miss USA. Just a magnificent woman on the outside and inside. And uh, fast forward five years, we're married. We have one child, um, two years old, and my wife almost all, almost like a cold came down with like clinical depression and suicidal thoughts and panic attacks. And it was it was really a life change instance. And so she wanted to go to a doctor, like a regular family doctor. So we went to the regular family doctor and the doctor looked at her and uh, talked to her about her symptoms, didn't really examine her at all. And just, oh, yeah, we know how to treat this. And she they handed me a book. It's called Anxiety Disorder. And so I'm, I'm flipping through the book and there was, she was like giddy about it. We know how to treat this Xanax and Zoloft and psychotherapy and I, I didn't know that much back then. I was the CEO of a medical device company. I, I knew how to make my muscles big with protein, but I did not understand clinical nutrition and the rest of the game. And so my wife was desperate. So she tried, she, she went on these drugs and also psychotherapy. And within a couple of weeks, she came and said, hey, KC, first of all, sitting on this dude's couch, I don't know, telling him about my life is not working for me. And these drugs are making me crazy. So it's, it's like worse than when I, when I started, you know, so, so we're going to have to find another way. And so this was a couple of weeks in. And so, so I went back and I resigned for, as my role as CEO of the medical device company. And I set out on a journey, really a 10 year journey of research and trial and error where my company was born living fuel and my, 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 my product philosophies were born and, and, and my, our products were born in, in, in my best selling books, all of this through this process of of learning thinking all it's going to be clinical nutrition clinical nutrition I, I felt like that was really the way to go so i met with all the top clinical nutritionists in america and i i read many books and so i met with the authors of the books and and took monica to this doctor and that doctor for analysis and and over a period of time it went from you know things got better and then they, they crashed again and so so i discovered there was actually several things uh, in the literature that were not nutrition related that were like profound and they stuck out to me. And it was hydration and nutrition and exercise and stress and environmental hazards and meditation and prayer. And so when you, when you actually realize that there are these seven keys that literally they're so powerful that most people watching right now will be deficient in at least four of the seven keys. And so if you literally take a piece of paper and you write these down and you give yourself a self rating, even if we're, even as we speak, you write down hydration, how am I doing on hydration? Rate yourself based on what you think, you know, and most people are going to rate themselves at a six or a seven uh, because they drink uh, coffee all the time or soft drinks or whatever. They don't drink water, you know, spring water and verbal teas and those sort of things. And so they give themselves a rating. So I ask your, your, your viewers now to give, give themselves a rating on hydration. And then go to nutrition and say, give yourself a rating on nutrition. Well, most people self-describe themselves terrible in nutrition. They just eat fast foods and they eat all the time and they don't feel good. They don't have energy. There's all these things going on. They're overweight. They can't lose weight no matter what they try. They don't sleep well. So, so nutrition, rate yourself on nutrition, one to 10. So give yourself a score, one to 10 hydration, one to skin, 10 nutrition, and then go to, um, uh, to exercise. How are you doing on exercise? Well, if you don't feel good and you don't have energy, you're probably not doing so good on exercise. So you look at the exercise and you give yourself a rating, one to 10. And then you skip on to, to, uh, to sleep. 
Okay, so how, how, I mean, stress, stress. So how are you doing? Are you highly stressed? Do you have the stresses that are not good for you, like um, a relational stress and financial stress and and work stress? These things actually are aging, hyper aging, and they actually cross over and they cause problems in other areas. So rate yourself on stress. Am I stressed? One to 10, 10 being, uh, I'm sorry, one being great and 10, I'm uh, sorry, 10 being great and one being poor. <laughs> Again, now you got your list going on. So now you scoot, go from stress to sleep. You say, okay, how is my sleep? Well, you know, I get up a couple times a night and, you know, I sleep about six or seven hours a night. And, you know, this is not good. And most people know when they wake up and they don't have any energy and they feel sleepy and they wish they could go back to bed that they didn't sleep so good the night before. And sleep is a very important piece. And these things, as you notice, as I'm discussing them, you notice the hydration crosses over with nutrition and nutrition actually crosses over with exercise because you don't feel like it and stress and sleep, they combine. And then you go into these environmental hazards. Okay. So, do you eat organic foods or do you eat foods from processed foods from the store? The way you feel is going to be dramatically different depending on the types of foods you actually consume. Are you consuming live organic foods or are you considering, are, are you eating pesticide crops, you know, that, that are genetically modified? It makes a big difference in the way you feel and your health and all that sort of thing. And then you cross over into the seventh key, which is meditation and prayer. Now, I first looked at this. Listen, I don't want to. I didn't want to preach to everybody. I just wanted to say, what did the medical literature say about meditation and prayer? And you look at the literature. I found this study called the Mantra Project at Duke University, probably 20 years ago. And apparently, they were trying to disprove prayer. So they had like 50% of the cardiac patients on on a prayer list worldwide, and the, the other 50% they didn't they didn't put on any prayer list, and then no one knew. So it was a double blind. So they found out that the patients on the prayer list had 50% less side effects than the ones that were not on the prayer list 50 percent now there's many studies that were that repeated this over and over and over in many ways but we actually realized that number one that not praying is malpractice really when it comes to medicine and health and number two is that people who meditate who focus on their breathing and their surroundings that sort of thing actually live longer or have are healthier or lower stress sleep better and so on so that is a little encapsulation of what I discovered over this 10 year journey. And my wife, she hadn't had a drug in 25 years. So, so these, this actually works. The whole thing works as a whole picture. And we're going to narrow down today to more nutrition, but that is the global view of the seven keys. Mm. Well, let's talk about, what you think it is that, and, and I, I want to talk about this product that you have the super essential micros, cause this is my favorite. And I want you guys to know that in my opinion, this is not my favorite thing that taste wise, but it's absolutely my favorite thing health wise. And so the way that I look at it is it takes me about 10 seconds to down this stuff and I feel so incredible for the rest of the day, but I'm not going to lie. Those 10 seconds, it's you, it's an acquired taste for sure. And I've already been taking it for a while and it still hasn't, it doesn't get too much better, but that's not how I look at it. I just look at it like, okay, it doesn't taste great, but it is what it is because it literally makes me feel so much better. So. I chalk it up to that. But what I was going to say is I read somewhere that the recommended potassium intake for an average adult is 4,700 milligrams of potassium in a day. And then I started looking at some things that are really high in potassium. And I was looking at, they said like dark leafy greens, like one cup of fresh spinach is like 167 milligrams, but one cup of cooked spinach is about 839 milligrams. And so I was thinking to myself, you know, a lot of people, I bet like one of the reasons why they really aren't feeling good is because if you, if that really is true, and you need 4,700 milligrams of potassium to feel good. Just think about that. Like how many people are eating that much? Even one sweet potato is 694 milligrams of potassium. That's still a lot of 
food, I mean, that's a far cry from 4,700 milligrams. Do you think because it has so much potassium, that's one of the reasons why people feel so good when they take it? Or what are some of the things that people are like, they were deficient in this, this, and this are the big reasons why it's such a game changer for people. Okay. So that's that's a really, really, you, you've discovered something super powerful that everyone watching needs to hear, okay? So before I go there, I'm going to say, as you did your chart and you scored yourself on each of the seven areas, that if you have seven or less in, in three or four of the seven areas, then you absolutely have physiologic consequences you're dealing with today in terms of your health that you don't even realize. So you can just take a few minutes and concentrate on each of those things every day, or just say, listen, this is my terrible one, so I'm gonna focus on this one. Maybe it's nutrition, or maybe it's sleep, or whatever the case may be. So that is just a little quick guide to how you start to get yourself moving in the right direction. So your potassium question, your uh, first world nutrient deficiency uh, comment about what which ones are low, my goodness. Everybody listening here is going to be low on at least 10, maybe maybe quite a bit more. So you mentioned potassium. I'll mention that one because it's the most important uh, electrolyte. And I say it's the most important because it's the most um, deficient, uh, followed by magnesium. Okay. So why is potassium important will be the first question you would ask. And then we'll get to the, the daily requirement. So potassium is important for a number of things. Okay. So potassium is the, the, the component, if you ever heard of the sodium potassium pump, the sodium potassium pump is the very reason that your heart beats. It's the polarity difference between sodium and potassium that moves and causes the heart to pump. So you must have it or you, you pass. I mean, literally it is your life that we're talking about here. So people don't realize that so many other things for potassium, potassium is involved. You ask, in every cell of the body. So potassium, the sodium potassium pump is the process used to move things in and out of the cells throughout your entire body. It is said that 30% of all energy that you intake goes to fuel the sodium potassium pump to, 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 to in the entire body system. So when you think of that, you think about, oh my goodness, it's really important, but why is nobody talking about it? Why is nobody talking about potassium? And if you ask somebody, hey, uh, in every every talk I ever give about this, I'll say, listen, no. so what's a great potassium food? And you can guess what people will say. What's the high potassium? They food? say bananas, right? Don't you think bananas is the number one thing people say? And it's That's not even the highest thing. Sweet well, potatoes so are better than bananas. My response to that one is always, have you had your 15 bananas today? You know? And so if you did, you probably have a sugar coma, uh, but you do have enough potassium. So bananas are a terrible source of, of potassium. It's amazing that they got that, uh, that wrap as a good source. So the highest potassium food that exists is living fuel. That would be living fuel super greens, living fuel super berry, and living fuel micros. All have 1400 milligrams per serving of, of living fuel if you use two scoops. OK, so you do intermittent fasting. So that's another thing we'll talk about in a minute. But so 4,700 milligrams, let's just say 5,000 milligrams. Your body literally is dump using and dumping basically 5,000 milligrams of potassium a day. And so a lot of doctors, they'll, they'll test your potassium and say, oh, your potassium is fine. And when, I, when I'm speaking to doctors, I say, well, let me ask you this question. How much potassium, how much of your total body potassium is in the blood? And they go, well, I don't know. Literally, doctors don't know. They know how to read a potassium test, but they don't know how much potassium is in the blood. So the, the answer to that question is 1% to 2% of your total potassium in your body is in your blood. So if your blood shows low potassium, you are in big trouble. If it shows normal, it doesn't mean anything, really. So if it shows normal, you need an intracellular potassium test in order to really know that. But to be sure... Everybody's deficient in potassium. Everybody, except for you, because you're taking the fuel, and me, because I focus on that area. I, I won't let myself be low in potassium because of how important that is. So, if if you hear, and and often you do hear that stomach acid diminishes over time, and therefore when you eat things of high value, let's just say you talk about uh, greens. You know, it's you could basically say essentially the leafy greens are about 500 milligrams per per serving. 
Okay, so you have to have 10 to 12 servings a day if that's where you're going to get your potassium from. So you got to look at your balance of intakes of, of potassium. But most people get somewhere in the area of 1,000 milligrams a day of potassium and 2,500 milligrams a day. I'm sorry, 3,500 milligrams a day of, of sodium. So if you have a pump that's designed for polarity like this and you literally invert the pump because you change the substrate, you have mostly sodium and less potassium. You're going to you're you're headed for problems starting not in only in every cell of the body, but in the cardiovascular system. So it is a big problem. Now, for years, they only and still today, very few times you can find a supplement with more than 99 milligrams of, of potassium. So that's a hundred. So that's 10 capsules per thousand milligrams. Okay. So think about how much you have to take to, to really supplement your potassium. It's really terrible. So I have literally just developed a multi-mineral complex to people who just want to get their potassium and, and, and a, a reasonable amount of all the other minerals, including the trace minerals, because it's so hard to get that from a supplement. And people are just not going to eat their 10 to 12 servings of greens a day. But if you drink like you do, the living fuel, you start with 1,400 milligrams if you do two scoops. And since you do intermittent fasting, you have to consider that one of the big problems with keto is dumping potassium. People don't know that. Why do people get the keto flu and they don't feel good when they're doing keto? That's because they've dumped potassium. They don't have enough potassium. And so when you add keto and intermittent fasting together, you've taken one window out. In other words, the breakfast window, if you will, is moved to lunch. And now you have lunch and dinner, depending on the spacing. You don't get enough intake of nutrient-dense foods to make up for the loss of the, any potassium you might have gotten. Does that make sense? So, so we have to think about nutrified keto and nutrified intermittent fasting if you're going to be healthy. So the potassium example is one example. If you have low potassium, you have low stomach acid because the potassium is used in the production of stomach acid. So there's so many things. When they, when, they, when they literally say this is an essential mineral or an essential vitamin, that means without it, eventually you die. And so I hope that was a too long an answer to your potassium question, but that was a, a really important example. So it is just so hard to overstate how important magnesium is for all aspects of our health. Everyone is talking about how critical magnesium is. And there is a long list of symptoms and diseases that can be eased or even treated with magnesium. So way back when, doctors used magnesium for all kinds of conditions like arrhythmia, constipation, preeclampsia, even seizures. And now it's kind of used as a last resort. It's absolutely essential to our health and our well-being. This is a huge problem because magnesium deficiency can increase your risk for all these different diseases. So I am really a big advocate of getting as many nutrients as we can through a well-balanced diet. Like that is super important. But I really feel like right now that food alone isn't going to work because our soil is so overworked and so mineral depleted that it's just lacking so much magnesium. Fortunately, Bi Optimizers has the solution. Their magnesium is the only one that has seven types of magnesium, and it's specially formulated to reach every tissue in your body. So go to magbreakthrough.com slash waste away. That's magbreakthrough.com slash waste away and get 10% off and use the code waste away to get your magnesium. Well, I think that, you know, and I'm getting ready to answer. I have a question from a listener that she asked, and I'm going to talk about that. But I think that people don't realize how many people have electrolyte imbalances. And when you're fasting and if you're active, you know, an electrolyte imbalance is a common issue. And so whether it's sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, zinc, you know, having all of those in balance is difficult to do. And they basically, like you said, it's like electrolytes are like that electrical charge. It's kind of like, you know, the, the, when your car is out of a battery, you know, what do you do? You have those two things, you know, that they put on the car to kind of charge you up. And 
So let me, let me read you this. And so my thought is that she's, she's probably got an electrolyte imbalance, but let's see what you think. Um, this is her name is Jenny and she's from Tampa, Florida, which is not too far from you. And that's, where, that's where your favorite, uh, that's your favorite carrot cake is from, right? Yeah, yeah, Alexander's. Yes. Um, so she says, I want to thank you. I've lost 14 pounds, finished reading your book, Waste Away, and I also reading One Meal and a Tasting. I'm doing fantastic with my intermittent fasting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So like I said, I've lost 14 pounds, but I have 16 pounds to go. One of my biggest problems is I've started to do longer fast, and one of the things is leg cramps ever since I started doing longer fast. I'm also having, and I I don't know what she's saying here. It kind of goes on. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, but she says, I'm also, well, well, let's address that and I'll read the rest of the question because okay. it's so long and I'm not going to read I can't all tell you of how it. Many times, how many times I've had this, this call, a distress call from someone I know very well. Mm -hmm. And they will say, KC, I'm having these horrible things that's been going on for a week or however long it is. And that I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm cramping. And, you know, I run down to the pharmacy because I saw this commercial about let restless leg syndrome. I put that on there. It doesn't work. And, you know, what in the world is going on? And so here we go again. The number, another deficiency that happens to probably 90 percent of America is a magnesium deficiency. And so I basically tell them, I'm about to tell you something, a protocol. And, and you are about to if you do this protocol and you continue it, you are about to experience your very last night. You have already experienced your very last night of of cramping of leg cramping. And it's a horrible thing. This is this cramping in the middle of the night, but also it's an indicator that you're very close to a heart problem. And so when you actually realize that, that blood pressure and, and, uh, you know, vessel and, and the heart, the whole thing, it, the magnesium plays such a huge role in that as well. And so when people take too much magnesium orally, they get diarrhea. That's just the way it works. Okay. So you can only, you got to find your tolerance, whether that be 600, four to 600 milligrams, usually per meal you can do, not per day. And so getting your magnesium levels up, and then also topically you can have uh, like a, a, a ancient minerals magnesium gel or cream that you put on your skin before you go to bed, and or you take um, Epsom salts baths because that's magnesium sulfate. So when you actually either, you can do a foot soak where you put a, a cup and a half of Epsom salts in warm water and soak your feet for 30 minutes, or you can do the same thing in a bath, put three cups in the, in the tub and soak in a warm bath, you'll find that you will not have leg cramps anymore. And so what she's telling you, she's doing a lot of fasting, like you said, electrolyte imbalance, not just imbalance, it's a, it's a, it's a, a lack, it's a complete def deficit of electrolytes. So people go into a fast deficient and expect to come out of the fast feeling great. It doesn't work that way. See, a lot of people will do living fuel micros, and we'll talk about those in a minute because we, we haven't uh, we, we haven't finished your, your discussion on that. But living fuel micros has all of the things we're talking about. It has the, the potassium and the magnesium and the, the, the vitamin uh, B12 and so many other things that your body is craving and deficient in. A lot of people will fast on uh, micros because it basically is the calories... When you mix micros and aminos, you literally have the 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 calories of a cup of coffee, but you have absolutely everything your body requires. And so it isn't about how many calories you get, is what are the nutrients you're getting and what's the density of those nutrients? I mean, so so are you getting enough of all the things you need to survive? Because you literally can survive on micros without calories. And so calories, you got to rethink this whole thing, this metabolic theory about calorie in, calorie out, that sort of thing. No, because if you can live on everything your body needs without intaking any significant calories, then something is wrong with the theory. And I always say that in theory, there's no difference between theory and reality, but in reality, there is. And so, so like if you're fasting, it, I would recommend mixing, uh, using living fuel micros as your base for fasting. So if you typically, like you shifted over to intermittent fasting, people are so confused about intermittent 
been fasting, they don't know whether, hey, I'm going to start eating at 11, I'm going to eat for eight hours, I'm going to eat constantly, and I'm going to eat whatever I want, and I'll be fine. They don't realize that you have to actually, um, if you're going to do this long term, you have to actually make it like your body recognizes. So for instance, instead of starting at 11 and eating till seven, like a lot of people do, you literally will just basically take what you normally had as your breakfast cycle and, and a three square meal a day, and you'll chop off the, the breakfast cycle and the breakfast now becomes the noon window. So you have a window. So you have a one to two hour window where you eat, let's just say noon, okay, to start with if you're learning it. But it needs to be when you, when you actually realize that you've now taken your, your meal, you're cutting your calories by a third, assuming each meal had the same amount of calories, you now have to increase the nutrient density in order to stay up with what you're losing because of the way you change your diet. So a lot of people can't lose weight because they, they've gone into a cycle of, of intermittent fasting, if you will, and they, and they have very low uh, nutrients in those windows. And so there's all kinds of things met metabolically off. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, and, and here's, I'm going to just kind of brief what she says. I'm not going to read all of it, but she basically says I'm having headaches and I'm getting heart palpitations. I'm wondering if I'm fasting too much. I'm eating in six hours a day. I need to see if I'm iron deficient. I read on Google that low levels of iron will cause the heart to work harder to deliver oxygen to the bloodstream and that will give you an elevated pulse and heartbeats. I also think I might have parasites and and she kind of goes on. So I'm not going to go over all of that. Okay, so but... she she is definitely dealing with potassium and magnesium deficiency. And probably I don't know what the sodium is like in her on our fasting, but sodium is important too. You get the sodium, 2,500 milligrams a day, potassium, let's say 5,000, 4,700 milligrams a day, and then magnesium at least at 600 milligrams a day. You see, so so when you think about she's been she was deficient because everybody is unless they, they know what they're 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 focusing on. She was deficient coming into her fast, going into her fast. There's no way to make it up because it, it is essential. Your body can't use something else to make up for it. It is essential. You must have it. And so most people that end up in the cath lab for, for arrhythmias are magnesium deficient. And that's primarily the problem. You could say potassium, magnesium deficient, probably over sodium and lower, low potassium and low magnesium. This causes the heart to palpitate. I mean, it, it causes heart problems. You'd be surprised how many people literally just change their diet and they, they're done with arrhythmias. And it's that simple in, in many of the cases. And so these deficiencies, they add up. There's so many of them. Vitamin D is a huge deficiency. Vitamin A is actually a huge deficiency because people think they can take beta carotene and end up with enough A in their body, particularly if they're vegetarian or vegan, they do, they cannot. And so, so you have to have a certain type of like red, uh, red rice. Uh, let's see. I forget what the, the source is. Uh, Anyway, there is a there is a full spectrum carotene which we use in Living Fuel that can deliver vitamin A to your body because your body your body has to convert it. But if you just do beta carotene, you forget about the alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and you don't have the whole picture. So, in other words, if you're going to eat the vegetarian sources, you have to have the whole picture. Just like in vitamin E, we have to have alpha, beta, gamma, delta to cotrinol and alpha, beta, gamma, delta to cofferol in order to have the whole picture that your body is requiring. So you can't just eat a d alpha decofferol and say i'm going to be fine on vitamin e does that make sense yeah the picture is and building all of these things matter all of the essentials matter and if you don't have the essentials then you're not going to be able to perform like you want to yeah and i want you to really explain a little bit because i think a lot of people you know, they hear about macros, you know, but I want to talk about kind of macronutrients versus micronutrients. Cause okay. I think sometimes people really focus on the macronutrients and they forget about, you know, being deficient in just one micronutrient can really affect an entire process for your body. So like if you're low on B12, you're going to be experiencing changes in your energy and your mood and you know if you don't have iron you know you don't have enough iron you could become anemic you know so talk a little bit about micronutrients for for a second so starting with macro as you mentioned that's carbohydrates fats and proteins right so think of carbohydrates as this 
white carbohydrates, okay, from grains or, or white sources, consider that as entertainment, okay? You have no physiologic need for that. And the only time they're justifiable is in and around a workout, okay? So a lot of dietetics, the whole, whole uh, science of diet dietetics, they miss, and they've been doing this for a long time, they're all about calories, the developing calories and they want you to have carbohydrates and fats and proteins and, and focus on macros and not micros and the point that you made there is that when you eat protein your body does you know you know what your daily requirement for protein is on a pure technical basis how much well i'm tricky i'm, I'm it's a trick question so don't answer it okay oh. <laughs> daily requirement for protein is zero all right now so I'm not telling you to eat zero protein. No, what your requirement is for is essential amino acids, you see? And so when you eat a piece of meat or a protein powder or whatever it is that's protein, you are basically getting the raw material for what you need. Yes, a lot of people are saying one gram of protein for every pound of ideal body weight per day. I do agree with that. I mean, the, the research really does push that way. So most people are deficient in good protein uh, or they eat beans or, or some kind of protein that is so uh, like so high in carbohydrates and low in protein that you're losing the benefit, okay? So when you eat protein, you're, eat, you're looking for essential amino acids and conditionally essential amino acids. That's what the body will preferentially achieve. And so when you eat protein, a piece of meat, for instance, your, your, your uptake protein at the rate of six to 10 grams an hour. So think about that. So if you eat 50 grams of protein and it takes you an hour to start generating even a single gram, then you got six to 10 grams an hour, even at the max 10, you're six hours later and you still have not gotten all the protein that you just consumed, all the amino acids out of the protein that you just consumed. Does that make sense? And mm -hmm. so we have to make sure that we're eating good, clean protein sources that don't bring uh, uh, its own source of problems with it in addition to the protein. And so, so this is the macro, this macro scene. And as far as carbohydrates are concerned, what you really want out of carbohydrates is fiber, okay? So fiber out of carbohydrates, that's considered a carbohydrate, but it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, doesn't count, it's indigestible. And so that's very important in your gut and in your immunity, because also the prebiotics like, like acidophilus, for instance, will pass right through your system unless it has something on which to build a colony like fiber or prebiotic. You see, that's why they call it prebiotic, because it establishes a place for it to be instead of washed out for it to be established in your in your microflora. So every little piece of this. Uh, micronutrition is super important. Even the government, we're talking about potassium so much today, but even the government says 4,700 milligrams a day. This is the government. They're never right, okay? You can be sure it's more. And people say, oh, potassium is dangerous. It's only dangerous if you're in kidney failure. If you're in kidney failure, okay? I'm, I'm sure if you took just potassium and you didn't have any sodium or anything else, that, that could be a problem also. But I'm saying balanced intake of potassium and, and taking 5,000 milligrams a day, it, when you know you're dumping it, think about it, every single day, you don't get a day off, okay? Every single day you're using and dumping, boom, 4,700 gone. If you are not replacing it, you don't have it. And if you don't have it, all the things that potassium brings to the party, including the energetic system, which is part of the ATP uh, to, to ADP back to ATP process, you don't have energy. You don't, so, so many things. And this is just one of so many things that you have to consider. All the B vitamins, all the minerals, the trace minerals by themselves, zinc in your immunity, I mean, so many people uh, in, in the COVID eight stage, they lost their taste and smell and say, wonder what that is. Well, that is a zinc deficiency. That's what that is. So mm -hmm. if you lose your taste and smell, you, you don't have enough zinc, not nearly enough. And part of getting your taste and smell back is making sure you're getting a highly absorbable zinc. And that's why they take quercetin with it because it's a zinc ionophore, which transforms and forces the zinc in the cell. And once the zinc goes in the cell, it shuts down viral replication, which is why it's so important in your immunity. There's so many other reasons also. But this, you literally can go down every nutrient and, and talk about, oh, that's important for this. And the government will tell you that if you have don't have enough uh, vitamin, is it A, you have rickets, right? Or is it vitamin A? Yeah, I guess it is. Uh, so so there's like, like when uh, the pilgrims came across the ocean, 
you know, they didn't have, they, they, they got scurvy. Why? Because they didn't have enough vitamin C. When, when they started eating oranges, they actually were, were actually so much better off and they didn't get scurvy. Well, a lot of people that have blockages in their arteries literally just have scurvy on the inside of their vessels. When you have scurvy, then the body will send calcium and, and they'll calcify that area and then it'll block down the, the, the vessel. And then you don't have enough magnesium, so there's not enough flexibility in the vessel to start with. Therefore, you have now a blockage where you have an ischemic condition. Now, particularly with people that have had the vaccine, the amount of, of uh, co coagulation in the blood and, and clotting is going up so much. You have people that are, that are dying spontaneously. All from a magnified at various shots on taking things blood running pure and fresh or pure and clean so that's why you take omega-3 because why do you take fish oil because it's epa and dha well what is dha docosahexaenoic acid what is your brain made of docosahexaenoic acid most of it and so these fats are are critical these are these are essential fats they call them essential fats why because they are essential you start to get the picture it's like incredible how each one of these nutrients have a story all by itself. And people wonder, gee, I don't feel good. Gee, I don't, I don't feel like I used to feel. Or, or, or the things they say with age, testosterone falls. Well, I, I had this doctor sit down and, and just talk to me about uh, their, their, their health. And, and I have just given a talk to a group of doctors. So I'm sitting down talking to the doctor. And he says, yeah, I don't have any energy. My testosterone has dropped like a rock. Uh, my cholesterol is is was high, and so so I said, well, what's your cholesterol now? He said, well, I'm on on uh, one of these cholesterol meds, and and I said, he says cholesterol is 130 total cholesterol. I hear this again and again and again. I said, well, what do you think that your testosterone is made of? Well, I don't know. Well, sex hormones are largely made from from cholesterol. You have to have cholesterol. Cholesterol is an important thing. And so when you when you artificially bring it down with these drugs, you literally are causing so many problems. So low cholesterol below 200 milligrams per deciliter, every point below 200 increases all-cause mortality. Every point below 200 increases all-cause mortality. And people on these cholesterol-lowering meds actually have an increase in all-cause mortality. So it all comes back to being balanced, getting the, an adequate amount in the right balance of all the essential and the critical nutrients that people are deficient in. Do you guys struggle with brain fog or having difficulty focusing? I know I do. Do you struggle with recalling names or dates or where you left things? Well, I've got good news for you. Newtopia, powered by Bioptimizers, has created a brand new one-of-a-kind product called Kala Genius. It has collagen, cocoa, cacao, different kinds of mushrooms. It's awesome. Kala Genius is delicious. It's sweetened with stevia. It tastes like a rich chocolate elixir. So when you want something sweet, just mix it up with a little bit of water or milk or almond milk, whatever you like and enjoy. You can also mix it with your morning coffee. Now, you know I always take care of you guys. And so my listeners, if you go to newtopia.com slash genius or use wasteaway10 during your checkout, you're going to save 10%. That's newtopia.com slash genius and use wasteaway10 during your checkout. Do it now and your brain will thank you. Well, I want to talk about, since you brought up fish oil, I want to talk about that because a lot of people are saying that 70 to 80% of fish oil that is on the shelves that they're selling is rancid before you even take it. And that they're, you know, saying that like, you know, truly fresh fish oil has no fishy taste or smell, just like fresh fish, you know, if it's super, super fresh, um, you know, obviously the longer it, it sits, it's got more of a fishy smell. But if you take your fish oil capsules, you break them open, you can smell, if your nose kind of catches like a pungent smell, then it's time to throw it away. But I'm hearing more and more, I'm listening to different podcasts and people after people are saying crazy numbers like, you know, 70% of fish oil is rancid. I don't know. It's just the new thing that people are talking about right now. What, what would you say to that? Okay. Well, 
it is very important to pay attention to the rancidity of your oil because most fish oils have just enough D alpha tocopherol in it to keep it from spoiling any further in the capsule, in the gel cap, okay? Not in your body. So when you basically are an oxygen consuming being, particularly when you exercise and you have rancid oils, you now increase the, the amount of oxygen exposed to those oils. They literally spoil in your body. You know, the research would suggest that even bad fish oil is better than no fish oil. But there's a lot of marketing going on out there where the where the shellfish oils are trying to compete, krill and all these other ones with fish oil. And they they basically try to trash fish oil so that they just look better. But th there is they are not better. They're they're lower in EPA and DHA. They are they are just basically fish oil is what they are with 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 a lot more expensive and, and, and less. So what you have to do is you have to start with a good fish oil. So you should be able to open the fish oil. And this is, this is what I do with all, take a gel cap and chew it. Okay. Olive oil tastes like olives. Coconut oil tastes like coconut and fish oil tastes like fish. It doesn't taste like no fish. It just doesn't taste like, you know, if it's disgusting, if it's, if it's like revolting and rancid, you will be able to tell by chewing the fish, the capsule. So I always tell people, take these gel caps and chew them. OK, but we also infuse them with full spectrum vitamin E, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, tocotrienol, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, tocopherol, as well as vitamin A, which is a significant antioxidant, as well as GLA, because when you combine GLA and EPA, you actually block what's called arachidonic acid, which is E2, which is highly inflammatory. And you magnify by E1 and 3, which is increase the anti-inflammatory nature of fish oil, which is already very strong. And so then we also add uh, vitamin D at the level of cod, cod liver oil. So this is a, the most sophisticated essential fatty acid that exists. And we had to make it because we literally couldn't find it. You can, pe people out there, they claim pure fish oils, but fish oil, I don't care if you keep it in the refrigerator or what you do, the second you take the lid off it and expose it to oxygen, it's going to start to go rancid. It's, it's very delicate, polyunsaturated fats that go rancid with oxygen. The fit, the refrigerator doesn't help it. You see, so so that's why I don't I don't recommend cod liver oil because it's like a liquid oil that's exposed to oxygen and does have vitamin A and D in it, which keeps it stable longer, but you don't want to expose it to oxygen and keep taking liquid oils. You want to seal them in a gel cap. And we particularly use uh, buffalo gelatin because there's so many problems with swine and 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 commercially raised cow gelatin that we we don't want to go there. So we we seal them in buffalo gelatin uh, so away from the oxygen and have all these antioxidants infused in them, along with astaxanthin in there, which is a the thing that makes a lobster the color of lobster and and it's a it's a small molecule antioxidant. So the more antioxidants you can infuse into your omega threes, the better off you are because it can all the 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 antioxidant is going to do you great because these are fat soluble AEDs and Ks. Uh, very important, and people are deficient in them. Plus, it protects the oil from going rancid. So, do you have a specific diet that you talk about in your book, the Super Health Diet? Do you kind of say, like, you know, focus on eating this, or kind of what's what's a typical day of eating look like for you? So, would okay, you well, say, you know, I eat this, I don't eat this? What does that let look me explain, like? Let me explain one other area real quick before I go there. Okay, antioxidants, sure. because people think that if I take a vitamin C, I'm good on my antioxidants. They, there's all these kind. It's kind of gone away now, but the, the wine bottle antioxidants, where there's basically tell you bottle and tell you how good it is antioxidant wise, and you put it, you, you drink it every day. Well, what the people don't talk about is antioxidants are five class or six classes, six major classes. It's hydroxyl, peroxyl, peroxy nitrite, superoxide, amylate, amylate, singlet, oxygen, and hypochlorite. And so when you actually recognize that there are six major classes of oxidants trying to take you out at all times, and you're only eating one class or two classes, it's like you're rowing your boat and, you, and there's six holes in it and you only identified two and plugged them, but you're still sinking. You don't realize that you still. So living fuel in terms of the super berry and super greens, which are delicious smoothies and the micros, which is a un- uh, is just raw, natural taste. It is harsh for those who are not used to that. It's for people who are super serious about nutrition. What's interesting is that the micronutrition level of both of these are the same, okay? The, this is this is identical, but this has 
the macro, the, the 30 grams of protein and the 10 grams of fiber and so on, it has those things. And, and these things bring the pungenicity of the actual natural micros uh, down to nothing. And then if you really want to get yummy, 100 grams of, of organic blueberry, strawberry, raspberry, cranberry added per serving also makes this thing a beautiful tasting thing. But there's a different, it's a different thing. If you're going to have a meal of living fuel superberry, it can be your entire meal and you don't have to eat anything else. Okay. You can also do the same thing with micros. If you add either the living protein, okay, which I talked about protein is a raw material so that you get amino acids and nitrogen technically. Amino acids and nitrogen. That's why it tests nitrogen levels when you actually have protein because nitro, this is your, your primary source of nitrogen. And, and so amino acids and nitrogen. So these two together, along with the omegas, you're basically getting no calories, a calories of a cup of coffee, but you're getting everything your body needs. So imagine what your body can do in terms of uh, body fat optimization, how that's better than just a pure fast, because now your body's getting everything it needs in terms of no calories and your body can do every, I mean, your body's a miracle. It's a miraculous machine. And when you give it what it needs, miraculous things happen. And so if we're stuck in our health in some area, we first have to make sure that we nutrify. I'm giving a talk here at a major conference here next week. Uh, it's called Nutrify or Die because it's that simple. You literally, the people with the leg cramps, they're in big, like the lady that wrote to you, she's at big risk of cardiac problems. She already said she has palpitations, right? Because the, the electrolytes are so diminished in her system that she, her body is revolting and it cannot hold on long from the point that she's at. That's when she's got to turn that around. So when we realize that you have to have a foundation of nutrition before you start going for the entertainment, Okay, sugar and carbohydrates, those things are entertainment. That's what they are. And so when you actually have your foundation covered, you no longer have that heavy craving for carbohydrates and sugar. You basically, the cravings are gone. You got everything you need. And now if you want to go out and have some eggs or something like that, if you even want to go to a pizza meal, uh, by the way, pizza is a dessert. It's called pizza pie. If everybody realizes it. it's a dessert, okay? It's not a meal. So if you have, if you're going to go out to an unhealthy meal, like 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 over the holidays, we've been eating all this stuff. I will literally have micros and aminos and and omegas, and I'll have that as my foundation before I even get in the environment. And when I get in that environment, because I did that, I don't have that. Just craving, I can't stand uh, to eat the bread and the butter that's sitting in front of me. I've already made a decision what I'm willing to do when I get there. If you're going to go on a total splurge, go ahead and cover the nutrition foundation. Go on a total splurge, and then the next, if you imagine uh, a fuel fast, where you just do living fuel uh, super smoothies, or you go like you talk about. This is harsh to start with. It's it's you really have to care about your health to go all the way to living fuel micros, right? Now we're, we're gonna develop because we have some recipes you can actually do that actually make it taste good, but we're going to develop the same product uh, and go ahead and make the taste neutral. Okay, right now we wanted to basically make something that was literally whatever all of these nutrients end up tasting like is what this is, okay? And you mix this with micro, with, with amino acids and literally within seconds, you can start to feel your energy change, right? Remember when you first had it? You can start to feel your energy rise in a way that, wait a minute, that doesn't feel like the energy I'm used to because guess what? Caffeine is not energy. This is a different, sugar is not energy. That's a different, it's a different type of energy. What I'm talking about is, is energetics where your body literally rises in energy to where you feel good. And so the point is, make sure that the gym is the last place you go to get in shape. I would say the first place is handle your nutrition foundation, and then your energy will rise so much that you're going to want to go do something with that energy. That's when you go to the gym. So my mm -hmm. day starts with living fuel. So I do not have a traditional breakfast in the morning. I have, I have herbal teas or, or some kind of organic coffee or something in the morning. And then when I get to between noon and two or three, I will have my living fuel. And if I'm, I have a, a lunch date or something like that or a lunch meeting, I'll go out and have a little something in addition to that. OK, but I, I consume it within a window. OK, and so here's the thing about intermittent fasting. If, if you want to, to go in that area right now, we talk a lot of people go intermittent fasting. They don't really understand what they're doing. And they think that since I'm, I'm doing away with my breakfast window, that means that instead of waking up and eating at 7 a.m., 
I now I'm not eating till 11, 11 a.m. And I start eating at 11 and I just start grazing and I graze throughout the day until I'm done at my seven o'clock window. And they call that intermittent fasting. Now, that probably is better than what they were doing prior, because usually when people do anything by design, it ends up being better than what they did by default. But the, the point is, this is not an opportunity to graze all day. What are you trying to accomplish? If you want to lose weight, then make sure you have a nutrified intermittent fasting or nutrified keto combined, okay? And so now, what does that mean? So if the longer you can go in the morning, okay? So let's just say that, that you're, you're getting a little bit of experience with this and you have no problem going, drinking water and herbal tea in the morning, maybe some coffee, but without all the cream and sugar and stuff, and you and you get yourself to noon easily, then you give yourself a one hour window, ideally, that you will have your nutrification, whether that be living fuel super smoothie as your lunch or living fuel micros with aminos or with living protein. And then you have that one hour window and then you give your body time to rest. OK, because the body's design is that that you you you, you eat your blood sugar goes from, say, 87 to, say, 100 or 120. OK, so it depends on what you ate. And then over a period of a couple hours, it comes back down towards where you, you initially started. Let's just say 87. And when your when your blood sugar comes down, too many people start to uh, start to shake when they when their blood sugar comes back down and they end up taking something from the snack room or a coffee with sugar in it or, or milk because milk is lactose. So lactose is sugar. So a little people don't realize they're drinking milk, but they're actually taking sugar. That's what that's what milk sugar is. And so what you want to do is you want to have your blood sugar go up. Insulin starts to push, comes back down to baseline in about one and a half to two hours. And from that point until the next thing you put in your mouth is maximum metabolic mode. OK, so that means your body is literally releasing glucagon, which takes stored fats and sugars, stored foods, and you starts burning the stored foods until you get to the place where the body's burning stored foods, you are storing foods because the insulin signal means store energy. If you have high insulin, you are storing energy. No matter what you think, you can try to lose some weight, but you're not going very far because you cannot win over insulin. So the point I'm trying to make is that when you decide what your window is, and when you're first learning intermittent fasting, you might say 12 and six. So 12 at noon, one hour window, they let your let your body go run for the rest of the afternoon. No snacking in the middle. If you should find yourself needing a snack in the middle, the next time around, take that snack and pull it back within your one hour eating window and eat it then. Because you don't want to under fuel. You have to learn to fuel yourself. If you're going to fly from, from where you are to New York, you don't want to stop in the middle and have to land and refuel and go again. You want to basically fuel yourself properly. So if you under fuel yourself in your meal window, your body will be calling for a snack. When you eat that snack, you shut off your metabolic mode, maximum metabolic mode, and you don't burn the fat. Okay, is this making sense? And so Absolutely. what you want to try to do is separate those two times as two meal windows within your intermittent fast. Now, here's a trick. If you really want to lose weight, you start pushing your windows closer together. So as you as you now, let's just say that you're at 18 hours so at six to 12, uh, you eat it at, at six at noon and six. That's a that's an 18 hour fast. But if you start pushing that fast, or now you got you got uh, four hours between your two meals, now you don't have to worry about that mode in the middle. You can literally graze from the beginning to the end. What I always tell people when I'm trying to to thin out after like a holiday season like just now i will eat later on my intermittent fast and i will i will make sure that i have micros to start with or or a living fuel because i want to make sure i get all my nutrients and if i want to graze all the way to my last meal over the four hours if you're at five hours or less you can graze the whole time but make sure you nutrify at the beginning and the end of that window and not eat again in the in the off hours so if you get yourself to one meal a day with a three to four hour spacing, you will find you will burn weight a lot if you are properly nutrified. And that's the trick. Mm, 
Love it. Well, this has been amazing. Tell listeners where they can find you, where they can follow you. And I will put the link in the show notes for you guys to buy some of these different products. As I said, my favorite are mixing these two together. And just remember, it's 10 seconds. You're going to feel like a million bucks. It's the super essential micros and the super, super essential aminos. I love all the other ones. The other ones taste great. This one, not as much, but I feel personally the most impact for me is through these two products. Essentially, I mentioned that protein uptakes at six to 10 grams an hour. Well, my aminos uptake at all of them within 20, 20 minutes, you see. So if you take 20 grams of aminos in 20 minutes, they're all in your bloodstream versus taking several hours to get even anywhere near that in your bloodstream. So it's a when you start with amino, everything starts with aminos. And so when you have the aminos and the micros and the omegas, you literally have the foundation for incredible health and incredible optimized weight and so on. And so I agree with you, that is harsh. You have to develop a taste for that, or you got to start with Living Fuel, Super Berry, or, or Super Green and enjoy your super smoothie. Awesome. Well, tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Okay, so you can follow me at livingfuel.com. I'm, I'm on Instagram at, at Casey Krejci and uh, also on uh, TikTok. And I do these shorts where I give you a daily tip. Like many of the tips you got all bound together here, you can get them separately and with a little more detail, but all within a minute. And you can take that information and it becomes part of you. Awesome. awesome. Well, you guys so, stay tuned. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Also, get the book, The Super Health Diet, the last diet you'll ever need. It will it will do you great. Awesome. Well, you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.